Hello YouTube, D. Badger here. So in my last video, teardown video, of this um, uh, <clears throat> fake 1600 farad uh, spot welder from China, uh, I showed you the switching power supply, and it's of average quality. Um, so let's talk about a few details about the spot welder, since this is a teardown video. So the LCD um, plugs into these headers. It's not secured in any way, it's just held in by the pin headers, and that's it. The underside of the LCD is the brains. So right there, that guy is an STC-8A8K. I won't read the rest of the part number. But um, yeah, there, there's a whole series of STC microcontrollers. Sorry about that. My uh, multimeter was saying, hey, I'm shutting off. Um, but there's a whole series of STC-8A8K. Uh, microcontrollers. They have some firmware in them. They have some analog to digital converters. They've got a bunch of digital I.O. pins on them. Um, this is equivalent to a bunch of other microcontrollers that have similar size. Uh, I was really expecting this to be a 3.3 volt device, uh, like the Atmels typically are, and it's not. So this little guy over here, that is a 7805 5 volt regulator. So that guy runs on 5 volts, not 3.3. Um, I believe this is an I2C LCD. You know, it only takes four wires, so ground, five volts, and uh, two data lines to run it. I believe that's the case, um, just because there's not enough pin out here really to run anything else. Uh, and that's what, <laughs> that's basically my guess on that. So uh, uh, here is the main board. Uh, I guess you could call this the power board. Um, so 12 volts comes in, you have a smoothing cap, you've got a MOSFET, you've got an inductor, you have the oscillator chip, and you've got a smoothing cap coming out. So um, the uh, <clears throat> microcontroller sends some kind of a signal, this little guy saying, you know, up or down for voltage, and then this puts out that much voltage, and then that monitors it back and says, oh, okay, that's 5.6 volts, not 5.4, turn it down a little bit. So you get a little bit of a feedback loop there. Um, right here, there is an 8 milliohm shunt, and that's how charge current is measured, is across that little shunt. So the uh, microcontroller knows that, you know, you're actually charging at 10 amps versus 2 amps. Um, over here, you've got six rows of resistors. Uh, my previous video, I said those were in parallel and those were in parallel, and they're not. So you really have a little bit more granular control over uh, charge current or discharge current for balancing. So you can have three on or six on um, per bank. So that's kind of cool. Um, when I was uh, discharging from 5.4 volts down to like 5.2 volts, I could feel that all six of these resistors were getting hot. So I assumed that they were all in parallel, and they're not. Instead, there is a bunch of little MOSFETs right here that turns them on in sets of three at a time. Um, here's your tweeter, here's your, your, uh, your foot pedal. Uh, this connector right here is labeled SGD for source, gate, and drain. And it goes down to the MOSFET board and your little twirly thing. Nothing special about the bottom side, other than those three screw terminals, uh, which I've shown in the other video. Those actually go to the uh, super cap board, so all the monitoring and all the charging of the super caps happens through those three pads right there. And let's talk about this. So here is your super cap module. And um, uh, charge current into the super caps all happens through those three brass standoffs. Kind of a clever idea. Um, you, you know, why not reuse standoffs uh, to bring current down into the super caps? Totally works. The voltage here is very, very low. And by the way, these are charged. Um, if I were to put something metal across those two uh, brass standoffs, I'd probably get a pretty good spark, or across those ones, I'd probably get a pretty good spark too. Um, but the voltage here is less than five volts, so it's not going to break through my skin resistance to shock me, um, even though there's a lot of current storage here. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's how you uh, monitor the super caps, and that's how you get charge current down to the super caps is through those. These other standoffs in the corner, they have no electrical path to them at all. On the underside, so this center copper path that goes out to uh, one of the probe leads, and then from here to here, you've got you know plus to minus and then plus to minus. So you have a series path across two super caps and again there and again there and again there. Uh, and then the same thing over here. So um, essentially, this is one set of 800 farads and or I'm sorry, one set of 400 farads, um, you know, with uh, two super caps in series and then another set of 400 farads with two of them in series over here. And then these standoffs right here are the current path out the negative side of the super caps to the MOSFET board, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, this is pretty lossy. So these are brass. 
uh, which has much more resistance than copper does, uh, and they're also really skinny. So uh, the, the, the butt end connection from the copper pad through the brass standoff is going to create a fair bit of loss. So uh, if I was to remake this thing, I would replace those with copper that was much larger diameter so that the, uh, the surface contact between the copper uh, sheet right here and the standoff would be much greater and the resistance of the copper would be way less too. So that would help these things a lot and that would probably, um, that, that's one of the three things that I would do right off the bat to make this thing capable of spot welding 0.3 millimeter nickel because as is you can't do it. All right, so uh, yeah, let's talk about the MOSFET board. Oh, so I guess I'll just leave it upside down. So the MOSFET board does the same thing. It screws down, uh, it's got brass screws that go into the standoffs to those holes right there. And of course those corners don't have any electrical path at all. Um, so here's the MOSFET board. So this is source drain and gate from the MOSFETs going to everything here. Um, the, all the MOSFETs are in parallel. Uh, and that's their control signal up to the main board. So uh, this is one current path from one set of super caps, and here's the other current path for the other set of super caps. And then this is the negative side um, after the MOSFETs, you know, out to the negative probe to your spot weld. Um, these MOSFETs are beat to hell. So like that one right there, it's got a big dent in it. Um, you know, there's a chunk of the plastic that's missing. Uh, this one, this one, this one, They're, the edges are chipped off of them. These are not new MOSFETs. I buy new MOSFETs and they come in anti-static tubes and when they arrive to you, they're pretty and clean. And these ones, like the tabs on them, those are all, you know, that's the, uh, that's the drain tabs. Um, those are all beat up and nicked up and scratches and stuff. These MOSFETs are recovered. They're not new. Um, they were banging around in a box somewhere. I can't really speak to that. Uh, I, I don't know what these things came from, but they are uh, listed as uh, IRL 3713, uh, which is an international rectifier part number. But are these real international rectifier MOSFETs? I would have to say that my doubts are high, that these are some Chinese thing. Also, uh, there's several things that about the MOSFETs themselves that make me feel like they're not real live IRL MOSFETs. Um, the fonts. So you pick any four MOSFETs on here, and they'll all have different fonts on them. You know, the the uh, the part number or or the uh, you know the date stamp or things like that. will all have or the little uh, diode logo that International Regulator uses, International Rectifier uses, um, is is all different on all of them. So the probability that these are actually uh, real live International Rectifier MOSFETs. Well, my doubts are high. <clears throat> They're really high. I, I would say there's some Chinese God knows what, you know, recovered from God knows where, um, slapped together on here, so on and so forth. Um, the uh, There's a couple things about this MOSFET board that are kind of kludgy that I would definitely change. Uh, obviously, the MOSFETs, I would just pull all those things off and buy legitimate low uh, RDS MOSFETs from some known source. Uh, and just get rid of these because I'm pretty sure that they're questionable at best. So um, this leg right here is the current path over to this tab, you know, with the uh, semiconductor in the middle. And the uh, thick part of the leg is rated for 75 amps on a TO220 package, and the skinny part is rated for 50 amps. And this copper right here um, goes through solder to the skinny part of the leg not to the fat part of the leg. So we're limiting resist or we're limiting current flow from the copper to the MOSFET because of that. And then um, I'm pretty sure this is crappy Chinese solder, so its resistance is going to be fairly high too. And the copper doesn't go right up to the leg anyway. So you're bridging from the copper pad to the leg with cheapy Chinese solder. So every way about this thing is you've got losses here, you've got losses in the brass standoffs. Um, and you've got whatever shitty MOSFETs these really are, um, which is probably the main reasons why this thing can't spot weld 0.3 millimeter nickel. Uh, re replace those things, uh, fix those uh, couple of problems, and this will probably do fine. Uh, if it still doesn't, which I'm, I'm somewhat thinking that it, it, it's close, so I think just a few little changes will make it go over the top and get there. But if it's still not enough, um, these super caps, they're made by a company called Green Cap, um, I looked it up, and I'm probably saying this wrong, but the uh, it's a brand name from a company called Hong Hua um, Electronics. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, they're Chinese, right? 
they're they're not a name brand like Maxwell. Uh, so there's a very high chance that their ESR is pretty high, uh, you know, compared to say like a Maxwell Supercap. So uh, I already know that this size Supercap physically, uh, you know, in value and so on is available in a Maxwell. So if it still won't get to 0.3 millimeter nickel, you know, sol solidly, then replace the Supercaps uh, with Maxwells. And then with that much lower ESR, then yeah, they'll absolutely dump the current. But uh, as is, you know, it's fine for like 0.15 millimeter nickel, and it's probably going to be a okay for 0.2. Although I don't have any to try that on. Um, but yeah, it's not going to cut cut it for 0.3. Not not yet, anyway. Hope any, anyway. Hope that helps somebody out. Uh, you've looked the thing over. You've seen my teardown. Um, uh, you've seen the good and the bad, and uh, and that you know you've you've decided you know hey that's good enough for me or oh man I better go buy a K weld because I want to have solid 0.3 millimeter welds and this thing can't do it. Anyway, I hope that helps. Talk to you later. Bye.